frustrated with what it says is biased media coverage, the Trump administration is now openly talking about gutting the First Amendment. They can't be serious, can they? Let's ask tonight's politics panel. With me for tonight's politics panel are Shelby Emmett, attorney and national advisory counsel for Project 21, and Linda Benish, communications director for Social Security Works. And thank you both for being back with me. It's great to have you both. So uh, during an appearance on ABC's This Week Sunday, White House Chief of Staff Rents Priebus admitted that the Trump administration was looking into changing libel laws so that they could sue people who publish critical stories. There was what he said about opening up the li libel laws, uh, tweeting, the failing New York Times has disgraced the media world, gotten me wrong for two solid years, change the libel laws. That would require, as I understand it, a constitutional amendment. Is he really going to pursue that? Is that something he wants to pursue? I think it's something that we've looked at um, and how that gets executed or whether that goes anywhere is a different story. It actually got worse from there. News agencies need to be more responsible with how they report the news. I am so tired. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. Everyone, it's about whether or not the president should have a right to sue And I already answered them. the question. I said this is something that is being looked at. Making the changes to our libel laws means that Trump apparently wants to require rewriting the First Amendment. For lack of a better term, you know, what the hell is going on here? This <laughs> rewriting the First Amendment, Shelby? Well, you is know, that conservative? Is that even remotely conservative? Well, I don't... I would never call Trump a conservative. Um, but what I will say is there's a reason we have the First Amendment, and it's because throughout human history, um, within five seconds of getting our Constitution, you had our own founders trying to limit with the Alien Sedation Acts. Oh, and John Adams, yeah. Yeah, this is, uh, this is why it's important, because each time some big, powerful politician says that they want to change the First Amendment, it's why I'm a First Amendment attorney. Um, the First Amendment's perfectly fine, and the fact that Trump is annoyed by it is more reason all of us need to embrace it. And this goes with everything. Those that want to amend the First Amendment to embrace hate speech or libel laws, the First Amendment is perfectly fine the way it is. Deal with it. It's beautiful. I love to see him getting frustrated. That's why we need it. God bless you. Linda, your thoughts? Well, you say that you wouldn't call Trump a conservative. I'm curious if you would call Rents Priebus a conservative. What is does the it, conservative movement now when they're just at the whims of this man who doesn't understand the Constitution, he doesn't respect it, and whatever he decides to tweet at 3 a.m. in the bathroom is what Rents Priebus has to say on TV the next day? Mm -hmm. I don't think it matters. It doesn't matter if it's a Democrat, Republican, a conservative, a nutcase. We have the First Amendment for a reason. And that's because all government people, when they get power, they get corrupt and they get nuts. It doesn't matter. Left, right, this is why we have it. Well, I've, uh, I'm an old man compared to you two, and I have <laughs> never heard a president. And I, I, go, I, can, I can remember Eisenhower. I've mm -hmm. never heard a president say it's time to, to rewrite the First Amendment. Well, Jackson, during the anti-slavery movement, right before the Civil War. During Andrew Jackson. Uh, yeah, but who, same who owned 150 this always slaves. Happens. This always <laughs> happens, though. This isn't a, I wish that we could sit here and say it's one part or the other. Yeah. We have a First Amendment because the government corrupts absolutely. Mm. That is the whole point of this. The only thing that gives someone, a former slave like Sojourner Truth, the same power in that instance as anyone else was her voice. This is why it's important. There's no way that he's going to get this through. And let him keep talking about it. This makes more people, I hope, understand the importance of free speech and to stop trying to put limitations on speech that they don't like because he's doing the exact same thing that you see happening on college campuses and everywhere else. You don't like something, deal with it. Well, You don't yeah, amend it. I, I, I heard the government corrupts absolutely. If government stops him from rewriting the First Amendment, it doesn't corrupt, it prevents Well, the people corruption. would, and he's, you know, this is why we have separation of powers, right? <clears throat> he can sit here and run his mouth all day with his chief of staff, but he can't single-handedly go in and amend anything. It's a beautiful thing. Any, any further thoughts, Linda? Yeah, Should well, I think Trump has been talking about this, about curtailing the media, using the power of government to, uh, to attack the media since he was a candidate. It's not like this is something that only started when he got into the White House. And so I think that it's not so much anything about being in government corrupting Trump. This is just fundamentally who he is at his core. Yeah, which one? Well, I think we can, all, we can all agree on that. Mm -hmm. New York Times readers are canceling their subscriptions in droves today after new right-wing columnist Brett Stevens argued in his first article for the Times that reasonable people can disagree about the threat posed by global warming. 
Stevens's piece has been widely condemned by climate scientists, but the Times has defended it as, quote, contributing to a vitally important debate. Don't the subscription, subscription cancelers have a point? I mean, if you're going to claim to be the paper of record, the, the business, what business do you have publishing dishonest stuff like this Brett Stevens piece? If the Times is really interested in contributing to a vitally important debate, why wouldn't it hire a Bernie Sanders supporter instead of another Republican? I mean, actually, I, I would argue this isn't even a Republican issue. Climate change and skepticism, I, he, he's not a total denier. He, he acknowledged climate change in the article, but, but said, let's not do anything about it, basically. I mean, that's, that's a whole different thing. But in the New York Times, Linda? Right. I think that like, the New York Times really has no business <laughs> publishing this any more than they should be publishing someone who says that we should consider the possibility that vaccines cause autism or that the world is controlled by lizard people. Right? There's a scientific consensus on this, and just spreading this myth, it's dangerous, and it exists for a reason. Um, the, the corporate community has spent decades pushing the idea that climate change isn't real because they're just worried about their short-term bottom lines. There's been a decades-long campaign that's the reason why so many Americans don't believe in climate change, and the New York Times is aiding and abetting it by putting this on their opinion column. Now, you know, Mr. Stevens has the right to say what he wants, but that doesn't mean that they should be printing it. Are, are you trying to tell me that Donald Trump is not a lizard person? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Cheap shot. Ben. Um, look, I think uh, I'm not one of the only people in this country that would say I don't think a lot of people respect the New York Times anyway. Um, I would assume that they started doing this because they wanted to be, be taken seriously. I don't know if this was the right route to do it. Um, but I don't really think it matters. Let's keep talking about it. Let's, it's, a, it's a debate. Let's keep debating it. Everything should always be debated. The search for truth is never ending. So let it happen. And if people don't like it, don't buy the New York Times. I stopped buying the New York Times 10 years ago. Um, who cares? Let the marketplace work it out. There was a time in the Republican Party and in the conservative movement when integrity was a real high value and independence from from corporate influence was a real high value. William F. Buckley was probably the, the, the epitome of that. Uh, his autobiography, Overdrive, is you know an, an absolutely brilliant book. I interviewed him mm -hmm. after he wrote it. He, I, I wrote about him in one of my books. I actually have had a lot of respect for William Buckley. Um, uh, David Frum was, has been on this show. He's been on my radio show just, just a month or so ago. He, I, I think he's sort of the heir to Buckley, although not quite as combative or uh, whatever. But, what has happened in the conservative movement that climate skepticism, obviously on behalf of fossil fuel interests, I mean, this is all about the money, um, is even well, I don't is think it's really tolerated. a conservative thing. I think, That's my point. I, I think I we're, we're getting this on, on both sides for everything. I think the entire country has decided, you know, you're a liberal, so you vote Democrat, you're a conservative, you vote Republican, and everyone has refuse to deal with ideas with which they may disagree and actually force themselves to look at, you know, critical research. I mean, we've got a whole country now that's blaming Russia for our elections instead of actually taking the American people seriously with their vote, as is what? The three of us are in the better position to inform and educate people. People are going to make their own minds on things. And as more and more research comes up, we'll, we'll get to science, our own conclusion. On science? I mean, if, would you science, go to your doctor I mean, with an infection and, and your doctor says, well, look at she what says you should take now. these pills and you say, well, I, I think I'm going to make up my own mind. Maybe look I'll go eat some now, grass. Though. Every other week you read a study that says red wine's bad for you or chocolate's bad for you. And then the next week you read the other study that I only pay attention to that says <laughs> red wine's good for you, right? <laughs> so we all do this. And I think we're not at a place yet to know one way or the other. Um, but this is why we have science, and this is why we keep going. And you never know when things are going to change. So what's the big deal? So we keep debating it. What is, what's the problem? Well, the problem is that if you keep debating things, then people are going to think that we can just keep going the way that we are, that our planet isn't in danger, that we don't have to make a change because it's harder to change our behavior to make corporations change their behavior than to do nothing. And corporations would just love to keep having this debate for decades and decades until we're having it under the ocean. I think we're repeating Or the, an the, asteroid that will take uh, us out long before that. We're repeating the whole tobacco <laughs> thing, it seems to me. Donald Trump today defended his decision to invite authoritarian Filipino President Rodrigo Duterte to the White House, telling Bloomberg that the Philippines is very important to me strategically and militarily. Since Duterte took office last summer, he's overseen a brutal drug war that's killed upwards of 9,000 people. Trump has personally praised these efforts and said that the Philippines is fighting very hard to get rid of drugs. This to me seems like an extension of Trump's call to congratulate Erdogan, Erdogan 
Should we be honoring dictators and tyrants? Is liberal democracy dying around the world, and is the United States helping speed that up? Linda? Well, I think that to understand why Trump is doing this, you need to look at his bottom line. He has a multi-million dollar a new Trump Tower opening in the Philippines very shortly. He got several million dollars just for giving his name to the thing. He's going to get a proceeds of the rent from the tower. And, you know, Trump ran for president saying, I'm going to govern America like a business, but he's actually running the government to benefit his business. And he doesn't care what kinds of atrocities these rulers um, engage in. In fact, he might even admire them. But ultimately, I think this is all about his pocketbook. That's interesting. Shelby, he did say, I, I will be the first man to run for president and make a profit on it. He said that back during the primary. Well, I think we can all point to tons of politicians that have gone to office, didn't have much. I mean, look at Bernie Sanders. I mean, he's made tons of money, too. He, um, you he know, actually has not. This, he's, he's got a lot of money. He's got at least more than one house. So for a he, man that when, talks about redistribution, he's not really when his When his wife's mother died, they took the inheritance yeah, and they Should he be redistributed home. that, though, to the less fortunate? Um, look, I say this to say that, A, I agree in general on public policy about the drug war. It's been a disaster. It's been a joke, and it's made money for uh, the government and, and hurt other people in the process. I think we can all agree on that. I think particularly my generation has been the one really promoting and saying this, where it was other generations that wanted to keep pushing on the, the drug war. Um, with that said, I mean, we could do this with every tyrant we see around the world. We, are we to ignore Syria because, you know, they're doing horrible things too? People are stoning Okay, Pick and choose. Yeah, okay. Uh, Shelby, Lena, thank you both very much for being with us tonight.